should be all set up from last time. And I learned from Andrea that you should be shooting for negative six with your audio. Yeah, that which is, is true. Yeah, so which she is knew cool. that, huh? Yeah, she just did, um, funny enough, we didn't even talk about it on the podcast, but she just got trained by uh, the National Guard to be a videographer. Really? Yeah, so she's like public relations for the doing video for... Uh, That's why she knew that. Yeah, so huh. she's got a bunch of training. It's funny because like she got trained on like these like fancy new cameras, and then her unit has like the big, huge, bulky like can like big TV camera cameras. Yeah, right. Yeah, really. So that's what she's using these yeah. big, giant like. Yeah. Oh, that's fun. So and she knew what Black Magic was, and she's talking about like mirrorless cameras, and I was like, you need to talk to Mike. Oh, dang! Hey. I need to talk with her. I didn't know she knew all that stuff. Now. Yeah. No, she's is she like. The video. Is she like really into it, or is she like she's super into it? What? She's loving it. Oh, I showed man. her. I showed her Casey Neistat. She was flipping out. Oh my gosh! So, okay, that's awesome. Like, yeah. I, I gotta talk to her. Like, <laughs> okay. yeah, someone else to geek about. Like, right now it's pretty much like Josh is kind of the only one that I really, like, really geek out about camera stuff. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. The new Black Magic thing is like kind of crazy. Like, they just released a new RAW profile that kind of changes. It's basically a new acquisition format that's better than anything that's ever been created before it's it's really good that's kind of the latest camera thing i'm geeking out about but latest camera thing yeah well you're listening to night jams i'm your host john thomas Pryor. i'm with mike pool hey. um let's cue the opener Corey, what are, what are we doing today seems looking pretty good think about we change some stuff Elon up has you know? to fight his worst enemy himself yeah <laughs> too much power <laughs> Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. building. Yeah. What, what compelled you to do this? Well, you see, there's this guy That's named Corey, and he was like, hey, you should do that. And I was like, no. And then I did. Why didn't I do it? <laughs> it actually, yeah. it's got kind of a it's weird really like... structure for a movie because it was originally shot yeah. in a TV pilot. I want to do it with a little bit more speed. I came in, and there's a camera, and I was like, ah. This is going to be a quality podcast. <laughs> quality. <laughs> Only quality. And that's my GoPro dying. <laughs> I thought I fixed you. Okay. You did just tell me you it doesn't die anymore. But uh, it's in arms reach, which is real handy. I can just turn it back on. So. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, that's what we need. Uh, so before we started the podcast, we were talking about how you were, you've been thinking a lot about the Google censorship something. Yeah, yeah. dude, it's crazy. I mean, they've basically so Google has basically. And the thing is, back in 2010, they said that they weren't going to, like, basically, basically Beijing will not allow Google search within China, right? I mean, they're, okay. they're right? They're, so China's like, no Google, right? Because they don't want people to realize that they're oppressed, basically, right? I mean, <laughs> right? So, so, and Google, so they're like, well, we'll let you in. They said, they said they'd let Google in if, uh, you know, you kind of modified the results a little bit, you know? Like, uh, suppress a little bit of truth here and there, you know? And Whoa. so, and so, but back in 2010, Google's like, no, 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 we're not going to do that. We're, we're not going to do that. But dude, now they actually are doing it. And the way they're doing it, not only are they, they're, they're coming into China. China's like, okay, we'll let you guys in. You just got to do these little changes or whatever, right? So one of the things they're going to change is like, they have to suppress whatever it is that, that, that they don't want to be, like hear about. Like, so, wow. so like one of the things that, uh, a, a current, um, I can't remember the name of it. Um, it might be Weeble or Weeble, whatever, uh, like their current sort of search engine that they're suppressing is uh, 1984, right? So the, they literally don't want them to like read the book 1984, right? So, and so they suppress those results in, they, they suppress those results. When you put in 1984, it doesn't come up with the book stuff. It doesn't do, right? It doesn't do any of that kind of stuff. Huh. Well, but they're basically, so Google is basically going to do that to their search engine and repress all kinds of searches for free speech stuff and all kind of whatever Beijing says they need to, you know, temper down the results on, right? Yeah. And so, but it's worse than that. It's crazy. So, like, um, not only is it, like, suppressing results, but it's also um, altering results. So, like, so one of the things that they wanted to do, they don't want people to, like, search for, like, air quality in Beijing or something and then realize that their air quality is terrible and they're all going to die, right? So so they literally will link to uh, government statistics that say 
you know, the air quality is really actually pretty good, you know, like, like literally, really? they're literally linking to stuff that isn't true on purpose and they've agreed to do it. Um, but actually the worst aspect of it is if you do a search of say one of these blacklisted terms or whatever, yeah. uh, it tracks your phone number. So literally oh it puts you on a list. So if you, if you search for something that you s- shouldn't search for, Beijing knows who you are. Whoa. Like, it's, like, horrible. Like, it's, like... It, and Google's cooperating yeah, with this? Yeah, Google's cooperating with it. There's been people, like, quitting over it. Um, but, like... How recent is this? When did they announce um, that This, this kind of, like, this? The, like, the real... I mean, the thing is, there's been, like, kind of stuff in the air for, like, a few months about it or whatever. Um, but, like, the details are just sort of coming out in the last uh, week or two. Yeah. Huh. Like, it's... it's it's crazy, man. Like it's Whoa. yeah, it's it's not good. Like it's like that, that is like the opposite thing that you'd want someone like Google to do. Like it's yeah. Um, I this this brought something up. I, I remember in one of my English classes, we were talking about like doing good research, and one of those things was um, my teacher brought up this website where it showed it had video. It was this really nice website of of like a pregnant man. That apparently they, that modern science had found a way to impregnate a man, and he's like walking around New York. Okay. But it was like totally faked. Yeah, it was totally this, fake. It was a total fake website. And his point was like, just because it looks real slick, doesn't mean it doesn't like, mean it's true. And yeah. you know, it's like it's up to like the user to like filter through this data. Um, but yeah, that's just on a whole nother level. Yeah, it's you know, bad, man. Yeah, like it's, it's it's like it's super bad. Like I mean, that's like. And it's just like, I mean, dude, China's a huge market. I mean, it's huge. Like, literally, Google gets into China, and they they might come close to doubling their revenue, man. And they're, I mean, they make like 100, and I think they, this last year, they had like over 125, 30 billion dollars in revenue. Huh. So that's a lot of money. But literally, to do it, they have to like, <laughs> like partner with this totalitarian regime, you know? I mean, that's like, crazy. Yeah, it's really bad, like... It's really bad. Like, it's doesn't crazy. that mess with Google's whole, like, point of... Like, <laughs> well, like right, they right, just... Right, right, right. The, the, the whole point is to aggregate information. That's right, exactly. And accurate information. Exactly. And, like, you probably know this, like... Um, but, like, like their motto is... Don't be evil. Don't be evil, right? Yeah, that's... Right? That's, well, here's the thing, though. The crazy thing is, is they dropped that motto, like, like last month or something. Like, it was like, it was recently. What's it now? Um, they Sometimes just, evil? They, <laughs> They just, dropped, they just dropped that part of it. Like, they dropped... Like, they're still, like... Because their full motto was, don't like... Don't be... Yeah, they just removed they that just, part. They just, just removed they, that They just part. say, don't now. Yeah. Like, that was, like I think that was, like, don't. three months ago or something like that. Like, they had to be been anticipating what they were doing. Like, they were going to be... Yeah. You know what? We better get rid of that. That doesn't really fit with this anymore. <laughs> I've, I've, I've heard Joe Rogan talk about, like, deleting your tweet doesn't count. Like, people, people will remember that yeah, you I mean, said yeah, that thing. Exactly. You know, it's, it's like, it's not like we're going to forget yeah, totally, yeah. that Google's mo- motto was, yeah. don't be evil. Yeah, it's not. But, dude, it's, it's crazy. I mean, but, you know, I mean, that's, dude, that's why this sort of the new blockchain stuff and everything is, like, so important because it's, it's going to open things back up again. You know, it's, with blockchain, you're not going to have to give all your information to these giant yeah. corporations and they're not going to be able to control all that info and stuff they're not you know it's the internet right now is kind of these little closed systems or whatever that these giant corporations control and blockchain is going to change all that which is exactly what yeah, needs so, to happen so, so blockchain we, we've had a couple conversations about this Elle's super pumped you're super pumped yes, I've heard it explained pumped. to me a couple times still not entirely sure like how is this the magic bullet um, I'm gonna explain what I know of it okay. now, and then you can you can go ahead and, and catch me up today. Okay, okay. So basically, blockchain is the next revolution that's gonna be happening in technology. Absolutely, yeah. Literally, yeah. it's gonna change the world in the next ten years. And you're basically changing it from a uh, like like a top down structure to like a network stru- structure. Totally, yeah. And flat. where there's like there's no like node that's more important than another node. It's like the whole network is just 
you know, so that so that's like a pretty simple mathematical concept. Like like a tree is like a fractal; everything comes down to the trunk. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, and then you've got like uh, like all the germs and like all the fungus that like is through, or like the insects that help the tree grow that can go anywhere on the tree. And then you got you got this like network right. of like, and so it's switching from like that tree model to like that bug model, basically. Yeah, totally. Actually, that's that's not bad. Like, that's, okay, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, and. It's revolutionary because this is going to happen to anything that has some type of, you know, like hierarchical structure in that sense. Of right. Like yeah. Banking, uh, you know, who controls your videos, you know, totally. like like and and so it's that's pretty good. It's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty. It's pretty good. Yeah. Totally. Like. Um, like whenever I start explaining blockchain to someone, I like I try to explain like the like the underlying technology of it is what enables this to happen what enables this sort of distributed network to happen is in the in the first blockchain um, was Bitcoin right yeah so and and how it works and, the, and what a blockchain is is lit- it's literally just like a ledger right which is a ledger is just you know uh it's just something that's recording transactions and information right and, it, and it's just a, it's just a record right okay um the, the what makes blockchain blockchain and what enables all this stuff is the fact that this is a distributed ledger so so like in the, in the original bitcoin or whatever right so anytime you make a transaction or um, you know, trade trade Bitcoin back and forth, and do anything. It's recorded in that ledger, and that ledger is distributed to everyone else that's on that blockchain. Everyone else that has Bitcoin. Everyone else. It's literally all at the same time. It, it's all filters out or whatever. And what by distributing that ledger everywhere, it makes it unhackable. Um, it, it, because, which is very cool. Yeah, which is that's what gives it its power. Its power is the fact that, like, it's oh wow, secure. it's secure. We have something that you can't get into, right? Because in, everyone gets hacked nowadays, right? I mean, everyone. There's just giant, <laughs> giant corporations that, like, oh yeah, sorry, last week, yeah, man, that we lost fifty million social security numbers. You know what? Are, what are oops. you gonna do? Yeah, yeah, oops, yeah, right. And but that that happens all the time, right? And 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 we're we're always having to like have multiple passwords for every website we have and all this yeah. stuff and it doesn't matter hackers get into all of them right but hackers have never hacked bitcoin <laughs> right it, it it can't be done like it's not it's 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 that secure that i mean everyone has access and then bitcoin's pretty big now right i mean it's yeah. it's over 100 billion dollars worth of bitcoins out there and, right? and of all like the cryptocurrencies that have like kind of come and gone and it's like kind of got a bad reputation bitcoin's kind of endured that would yeah you totally say? Yeah, yeah definitely it's i mean it's super secure i mean it's it's underlying blockchain uh technology is old but it's absolutely secure i mean it's it's more secure than a lot of the other blockchains or whatever for sure um but basically that security gets rid of the world's middleman basically and right now the what the way the world works or whatever is like Google is a middleman, right? Google is like, you know, we, we have, and, and Google is, we'll, we'll, we'll include YouTube and stuff and all that because that's yeah. a huge part of Google, right? Yeah. Um, but the thing is, is you, you need servers to house all this data, right? So you, you need all this stuff. And, and, and Google has to, in order to house that, they have to spend, you know, billions of dollars on these sort of giant server farms or whatever, yeah. right? And so they, that's what they do. And it, 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 and what it means is there's like, you know, there's like five corporations that basically dominate all of tech, right? I mean, it's, it's Amazon, Google, Apple, uh, Microsoft, and, um, <laughs> oh shoot, I think I lost. What's, what is that? There's one more. Um, uh, Linux? No, no, no. No, um, dominate. You said dominate. Sorry. No, it's all right. <laughs> there is one more though, <laughs> but anyway, uh, they literally probably Chinese. Yeah, they they dominate all of tech or whatever, and, and you're and you're basically you your passwords and your your Facebook. <laughs> oh, okay. How can I f- forget Facebook? Yeah. Um, but that's, basically, that's like software. Like all of, of our basically all of our information is is aggregated in these five. Like almost everyone in the world is on these five, right? Of some, in some kind or whatever, and and 
the structure that they have, the underlying structure that the old, old, the old technology of dealing that was having these giant servers and, and it cost tons of money and the only way to do it was having these giant corporations. But that gives the corporations all the power, right? And it's good as long as they're good, but if they do stuff like what Google's doing now, yeah. it's bad. It's like you don't want that. It's, that's terrible, right? And so blockchain, because it's absolutely secure in the future, um, you won't have to log into these websites and house your data there. You won't have to. It, it'll literally be distributed. And the thing is, you'll have an you'll have an online identity that is unhackable. So what what you do is you just provide your um, sort of unhackable identity proof proof of who you are from your end, but you control that identity, and then they just acknowledge it, and then you can make transactions. So you, you can interact directly with everyone now. Right, and so yeah. like one of the big things that like everything happens now, like so. How's it going? Yeah, I'll leave you guys to. I was just checking to see if the room was open for the yeah. Oh, okay. It's all right. <laughs> um, yeah. So banks, right? Banks are you, you give your money to a bank, and they're they're basically like a middleman, right? I mean, because the thing is, in order to tr- do transactions with with people and stuff, you kind of have to go through a bank. I mean, you, you can use cash and stuff right now. That's basically like say the old school blockchain or whatever, right? Um, but right now, like you you have to deal with the middleman. Even if like you go to buy a house or whatever, you do it through a bank, right? And the yeah. reason why is because the bank guarantees things, right? They they guarantee. Can you need people that guarantee? You you need things that are guaranteed. Well, the thing is with with blockchain stuff, and, and I'm not saying that like everything in banking is going to go away, but a lot of the normal aspects of banking that people count on aren't going to be needed anymore because the it's you don't need that proof anymore. It's 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 absolutely solid. Yeah. You know. And but anyway, besides being dealing with identity, it's also going to distribute everything else. So like in other words, like the next version of YouTube isn't going to require a giant you know, multi-billion dollar server farm, or in Google's case, like, dozens of them. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, it'll be available everywhere. Like, literally, it, it's um, people's computers. People will be using their computers to store bits, yeah. bits and pieces of the next of YouTube. The, of the whole internet. Exactly. Yeah. And so what happens is it distributes the network out to everyone. The, this, um, kind of, this kind of thing like that it happens right now at, like, uh, colleges. So a lot of science, um, I remember when I was taking an astronomy class, you could download a program that runs in the background of your computer. When your computer's not processing anything, it'll run this program, and it helps calculate some giant equation for the background static of the universe or something. Yeah, awesome. yeah, it's like totally, that. Yes. Or like, yeah. It like decodes messages from space or something. It, it, it was really cool. And um, it was kind of encouraged to like make uh, undergrads make like server farms and like, you know, to like, to like contribute run, to it, or whatever. yeah, to like, like run this like, program and try to yeah. get as much data contributed yeah, yeah. to this problem as possible. Um, I forget what I forget what that's called, um, but yeah. I, so there is yeah, a, so, there, so there's a there's something a there's similar to that. There's but. a blockchain version of that exact thing. Um, it's called Gollum. Oh. And um, so what it allows you to do is to anytime your your a computer is idle, you can uh, have it contribute to whatever. Gollum is going to process so people and so what it, the transactions work both ways so like you agree to um, use your computer it's not just computers either it's like your devices like phones like everything can have Gollum on it right huh. and so and you agree to you know when it's dormant when it's asleep or whatever hey yeah go ahead use use some of my CPU cycles right and you'll get paid for it really through through cryptocurrencies. Right, huh. and then and then uh, sort of like say say like a, a college or something that needs some uh, some number crunching and stuff, some really intensive processing on something. They can they can go to Gollum and, and pay Gollum. Hey, you know what? We need um, you know this much power, oh. and so and then they pay them that way, and that's how you get paid. And so it's like this. It's it's pretty amazing. And so what what it actually that's, that's like is a like, classic like Silicon Valley aha. Uh-huh. Yeah, like, like life hack. Exactly. I'm gonna I'm gonna use other people's processing power and sell it to other people, yep. and just be the ma- the Tim Ferriss in between. Exactly. Just like dancing, but that, but moving, that in the, between, moving the dials. That in between now, 
is, is handled through a blockchain, which doesn't require infrastructure <laughs> to, in order yeah. to do it. So these, these people that are running, running these blockchains, rather than having to be these giant corporations in order to run these types of situations, they don't have to be anyone. It could be a couple guys in a basement, and that's it. They're the entire thing, and that's, wow. that's how they run it, you know? So I've, I haven't heard this brought up when people are talking about, like, the future of AI and how robots are going to be taking everyone's jobs and, right. and particularly linked into like, um, like base, uh, universal baseball income is, is normally like the argument right. for that where it's like everyone will just get right. because a every- flat check from <laughs> because, the government right. to like be able to buy food and have housing. And then, so you have like this like base income your whole life to like, deal with the fact that you might not have consistent work because of it's been taken over by AI yeah right yeah or like like robots do it you know it's like no one's mining anymore like two guys control like aid like 50 robots that do it you know and they, yeah they've got jobs but you know the other <laughs> no one else it, does or yeah whatever, like yeah um especially domestic work because mm-hmm. like <clears throat> uh there's a book called poorly made in china it's a little old but um, it's about how when it comes to like chemical products like shampoos or toothpaste, China's really bad at. <laughs> they always just, they always get end up with like all kinds of crazy things yeah, corrupting. And yeah, so like, so yeah. those are done domestically yeah. really well, but they they can but it's this like perfect mix of like China does badly, but also we do it well, and it doesn't take many people to staff the assembly line when you're talking about mixing big vats of shampoo. You know, that yeah. takes a couple people at working some dials and just some funnels totally. and one of those crazy machines. It's like, you know, labeling the bottles and like shooting them full of, totally. full of shampoo. So, yeah. Um, yeah, like how do you think blockchain is going to mess with all that? And when you see people who work for these big tech companies, their jobs are now being that their jobs on the chopping block just like the welder yeah i mean as far as the like coal miner and i mean that is what's gonna happen worker. as far as like i mean in order for places like google to survive and stuff they will um diminish in size greatly they're not going to be able to survive in a blockchain world at that scale they're gonna they're gonna break up into smaller entities is what's going to happen i mean they're google's still going to exist but they're just going to be much smaller than they are now huh. um but that's not a bad thing though i don't think I mean, I'm not worried about AI taking over um, too much as far as, like, um, I mean, AI is a little bit, like, in my opinion, like, it's a, it's definitely uh, its ability to replace human thinking is exaggerated. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's like... Um, it, like I mean, I've been dealing with this stuff since like it was I was into game design and stuff way back. I, I remember going to GDC, um, man, 15, 10, 15 years ago. Actually, probably more than fifteen years ago now. And uh, those guys, the game designers and stuff, are trying to figure out basically how to get some AI type stuff, decision making things, and like how to have um, basically a lot. A lot of the stuff at the time was like more like um, sort of rec- like conversation recognition stuff right because okay. you, you want to be able to like have a conversation in a game with 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 computer the, yeah mm-hmm. right exactly but they want to be able to have a conversation um with uh, with an npc a non-player character okay and and then that non-player character be able to respond to you right and so it was like all the different ways that you could go about creating those uh, those responses uh-huh. but, but the way those responses happen is it's still mechanical. Like, it's yeah. still, like... I mean, yeah, trying... I, I just watched um, uh, some guys play uh, the new game uh, Vampire or Vampire. Yeah. And that's supposed to be, like, really good for its storytelling. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of times they just had three options of what, what they could talk totally. to this person as. Yeah. And they're like, I don't like any of these. I don't want to say any of these options. <laughs> and, and so, you know, that just goes to show that even still today... Yeah, I mean, I'm, it, I'm sure they didn't. The stuff, the stuff these guys were working game. on back then, it was literally like you you type into it exactly what you want to say, and yeah. then it's supposed to figure it out and stuff. And it was all about the ways to go about solving this problem or whatever. Um, it would be great to make a game, but just have one generic response. <laughs> it doesn't matter what. It's like 
<laughs> you, you just, just have, say you just whatever. Button, like, yeah, just you like, just say whatever you want, and you think you're like no matter what. Evan Market it. Like it's got this crazy engine that's like processing and just like troll the whole community. <laughs> well, basically, as far so AI in general hasn't actually gotten further along in that they're still using the same types of. I mean, basically, what they do is they figure out the most likely response based on having these words in this order or maybe this. But the thing is, it's it's not very good at sort of sparsing like complex thought at all like i mean you you can talk to like say an alexa ai or something like that and it, it's pretty dumb like it's not it, it can it can do some stuff and it, it but it's the only reason why it can do those stuff is it's it's oh i think you just uh no we're good so that's yeah. <laughs> we're back on okay yeah. um the only reason so so basically they use machine learning to to sparse out the options basically to try to figure out what's the most likely thing that they'll that they're talking about and that's basically how they solve it they they solve it by using machine learning to go through all the options until they figure yeah. out the most likely scenario of what they're and then they once they get that data within the system then they are they're better able to guess what it is you're you're saying yeah right and so that the accelerations in, L, in ai have to do with Using um, basically just running scenarios over and over again, you know, millions and millions of times until it gets more accurate and accurate to 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 the point of, yeah. of getting as close as possible to what people are are. But but once once uh, they figure that out, once once Alexis have had the millions of conversations that you know the, that computer's going to. But have. the thing is, but what you got to do is you have to think about it in a way that if the conversations that it's having. All it is, all it's doing is coming up with like, like responses. Like it's not actually like creating anything. Like okay. It's not, you know what I'm but saying. Like, but like, once it's got good responses, couldn't Amazon turn around and sell that to game companies and plug that in their game engine? Be like, hey, this is what normal. Like this is. It could, it could, but the thing is, is like they're so they're still so far away, man. Like they're yeah. so no, it'd like be a lot. It's like so they've gotten what they've gotten good at is individual words. So voice recognition. Is, is gotten pretty good, yeah. right? It's it's fairly accurate, but thought recognition is so far off. Oh, okay. That it's I mean it's and the thing is is like that's a really it, good distinction. Yeah, people yeah. are like, well, you know, Moore's law that you know the thing's gonna accelerate, but the thing is, <laughs> it's really it's not it's a much harder problem than that. It, it's not, mm. and, and the thing is is like the goal, of course, is a sentiency, right? <laughs> right. The goal is having an AI that can think. But that that's a that's another level because we're all we're talking about right now is is trying to sparse thoughts. Yeah. And they're terrible at that. Right? <laughs> AI, current AI is terrible at sparsing thoughts, right? What do you but mean? Actually, sparse? Well, I'm saying like it, you have a thought about something and you're you're asking, say, Alexa or something about it. What it does, it goes into and it, it listens to the words that you're saying and tries to think like, okay, yeah, he said this word, he's probably interested in this and, you, and if you play around with an AI long enough you can see like where its weaknesses are uh. like it's how it's actually getting its its responses right it, you, you can play around with an AI and, and see where it's getting its responses and so the thing is like to have a conversation like we're having right now yeah I mean dude it's it's so far off from that it's ridiculous but the thing is that even understanding what I'm saying right now is way unbelievably beyond the capabilities of AI but then responding intelligently and having a creative thought based off of that that adds new information that isn't just based off because that's the thing like like information theory is based off of like creating like new responses right but the thing is uh, those big databases of ai are based off of canned responses right it's not they're not to the point where they can make their own they're not even close right they can't even understand us let alone uh, come up with their own thoughts. Like it's it's so far beyond. It's like so overblown. Like um, the, the the book that I was telling you, I was reading that Life After Google okay. um, thing that that was about the blockchain. Um, th that's basically his argument throughout the whole book. That like AI is like um, it's 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 like the the tech moguls um, <laughs> alchemy. Uh. It's it's not it's not actually gonna happen you know i mean that oh, is their, okay. that is their goal that's what they think they're okay. like but it's it's not and, and i just i because of my background in, in video game design um and just 
all actually of these, seeing how hard that is. To yeah, make it's. A, I mean, it's crazy. Like, I mean, he's he's right. I mean, it's it's so far beyond it. And the thing is, when I, I mean, people can talk to Alexas and all that kind of stuff, and they they think, wow, they're smart and all this, but then they also get frustrated with it. I mean, usually what happens is the first couple of days they're like, oh yeah, that's cool or whatever, and then. You start trying to do a, even a little bit complicated stuff, something that, say, a three-year-old would get. Yeah. And it's it's way beyond. Alexa can't do that. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've, I've definitely got annoyed at our Alexa here just yeah. trying to play music. <laughs> yeah, like, Just right. trying it's, to get it to yeah, play. Yeah, right. It's, it's screwed up all uh, the time, song. Man. Well, it picks a song well. What it, what it doesn't do, it can't, it, can't uh, uh, it doesn't play it on the gym group playlist. Yeah, even when you tell it to. Yeah, yeah, and it's like so you just have to. My only, my only like workaround I found is like if you just get it to play anything, it's gonna put it on the playlist. So if you just say, "Hey, play some music," it's just gonna start. It's like here's a pop song playlist you might like, and immediately it's like awful music, <laughs> and then you ask it, "Oh, hey, play this," and then it'll. So you have so to like, you have to get it going first yeah, before it'll. Yeah, once. Um, once the plane's off the ground, then you can fly wherever you it want. It needs to get, like, halfway but, there before, yeah. It, like, yeah. But even, that's me, you know, figuring out how it works. Yeah, it's going, like, okay, I can hack it once it once it starts going, like, if you can't recognize. So that's, that was fun to figure out on, like, the build days when you're here by yourself. And you're like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, play some music. It's like, oh, yeah. yeah we yeah. didn't have that during the, uh, the funny thing is we didn't actually have music until, like, the last two days or something like yeah. that before that was well like like building the brick wall and stuff recently yeah like, so yeah exactly that was yeah. nice yeah yeah but whoo wee that's so you're not worried about AI I'm not worried about AI no. that's good because mm-hmm. there's some smart people very worried about AI yeah they're yeah. not they're my my uh, I, I just think that they're not as smart as they think they are. <laughs> yeah. Well, so then, so if it's not robots taking the jobs, you know, then may, maybe maybe there's some aspects of our culture that are more secure than we might think. But blockchain's yeah. definitely going to. Well, be, blockchain's going to disrupt it yeah. all for sure. Like it's not the 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 types of things that people do now. I mean, an example was the banking industry or whatever. Um, you're just not going to need a lot of those people because you're not going to need, um, you're not going to need middlemen in a lot of situations okay. to, to deal with it. Like, I mean, it, yeah, so one example is just a real simple, simplified example is right now uh, you put up, up a, up a uh, video on YouTube or whatever. And then, um, and you, as the, as the thing gets viewed, you end up getting advertising revenue, right? Right. Cause yeah. they, 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 Google puts up advertising on it and then, and then after when people see their ads, you get paid based on the views, right? Yeah, once, so, you, once you have 10,000 minutes watched and over 1,000 subscribers, I think. Yeah, Yeah, That's right. There's different, like, yeah, totally. Um, but so, so there's a person at Google. Well, there's lots of people at Google that do this, but that interact with the advertisers, right? The advertisers come to them and they go like, hey, you know, we want to advertise on uh, your platform. We want to give, you know, like, you know, can we set us up to all this? And they figure out, you know, which which accounts and stuff they want to target and all that kind of stuff. Um, but, so that person... And that, since the China thing, you guys <laughs> you guys look a lot different. He's got, like, his hair slicked back. <laughs> he's in this, like, like, pinstripe suit. Yeah, exactly. He, like, walks out of a cloud of smoke. He's like, yes, I'm here to work with you. <laughs> and I work for Google. But don't worry, we're not evil. <laughs> <laughs> no. So... In, in, with a blockchain, you would you in in say a, a future version of what's going to replace YouTube, you could have your own channel and you upload your video. And the thing is, the advertisers can come directly to you and just go like, "I want to advertise on your channel." Yeah. And the way they can do it, not only that, even uh, with the way um, uh, the Brave browser works and their Bat tokens, um, the users themselves. Can give you money directly um, through a, a type of advertising model or whatever that uses these bad coins. But basically, what it means is you don't, you no longer need these sort of advertising executives to deal with all these advertisers, right? Okay. It's like the advertisers can come directly to the, to the people they want to come to, and then just give you the money directly because you don't huh. have to go through Google as a middleman. So, middle any sort of, and it's not saying that there, it's all going to go away. I mean, there's still going to be middlemen in places, and there's still going to be a yeah. need for it. But but right now, it's like all middlemen. 
them. Like it's, it's that's but, that's but the, the middleman's going to have to add more value. They're, that's right. They're yeah. they're not, and so the armies of middlemen that there are now is going to have to dwindle a lot. Yeah. And so those jobs are in jeopardy for sure. Um, but huh. that's that's okay because it's it's the whole, right now it's in an inefficient system. Yeah. So as someone who makes indie movies and yes. as a film creator. And a creative person. What's the most exciting thing about blockchain for that process for you? Well, yeah. I mean, the, the most exciting thing is is I don't have to go through Netflix. Oh. Right? I don't have to. So I, And I can do it either way, right? So, so, so YouTube is the advertising model. And we just sort of explained how that works, whatever. Netflix is a subscription model. And in the subscription model, um, say I'm a content creator, I... I give my film to Netflix and they put it on their platform and then Netflix gets money from subscribers and then I get a portion of that subscription money based on views, right? That's how it happens, you know? So again, Netflix is a middleman, right? It needs to, but in the future, the future version of Netflix, whatever it's going to be, um, and it's probably, it really, these things are going to be, there's going to be multiple of them. It's going to be a lot smaller. There's not going to be like one thing. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, subscribers can subscribe directly to me. Okay. Right? And they can pay me through cryptocurrencies. Right? I mean, the thing is, is like, it, and so it's a, and, and it, it'll be an efficient system. It'll be like, they can come if they want to subscribe to my channel. And so you'll have a lot more direct contact, I guess, with uh, the people that like your stuff, which is good. Okay. You know, it's... It's awesome. And you don't have to worry about making content that uh, Netflix approves of or Netflix wants or doesn't want. You know, it's like you don't right. have to worry about that middleman. You can put out what you want and draw people to, you know, your platform and and they and people that flock to it, they, they can pay you. Yeah. And you have to worry. You don't have to worry about the fact that you're supporting a company that is also censoring things in China. Right, exactly, yes. No, that that, <laughs> that you feel good ethics all the way through. Yes, exactly, um, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Man. So, like, one of the things I, I see when I hear this is, okay, cool, anyone can follow my stuff directly, but one of the nice things about having, you know, uh, one platform for video, you know, you know you're, like, you're not on the wrong platform, you know you're not, like... Like, you know, it, it, like it adds more variables to right. the equation of like, totally. how can I get people to notice what I'm doing? Absolutely. You know, yeah. so mm-hmm. it's like, which know. was the, I mean, and the thing is, if you, you can imagine like, um, that is like, so, so if you imagine early internet, you don't have to imagine it, you're old enough, you know, but uh, yes. <laughs> it's, I, I use, there was, uh, there was, uh, AOL. Yeah. Or, or okay. There you yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> like, actually, I don't think I ever used AOL. Um, but I was like, I lived like out in the country and stuff, and so I didn't actually get internet until kind of later than what I should have, probably. Huh. Um, but so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what was I talking about again? Uh, we, we were talking about um, the and like getting yourself out there and being noticed in the blockchain world. Like so, so if YouTube yeah, doesn't exist, right, right, okay. So, but you, I was or, talking or, about so like, in, in your, the original smaller. internet, right? Yeah, the, the, we'll say, all right. Yeah. So before, like, there was a lot. Like, blogs were a lot bigger deal, right? Like, blogs were like before Facebook and before. That's true, right? And yeah. the reason why is because there wasn't a central aggregating place that that people could just go to and like you you went to people's individual sites. That's yeah. how you did it. And um, and honestly, like. You know, I think one of the problems is, like, when you look at an individual person on, like, Facebook, mm-hmm. there's, like, just enough, like, random stuff to go, like, I don't know what this person's about, like, unless you know them. Right, totally. But if yeah. you are doing those same posts on, a, on like, a blog, you're going to have to edit yourself a little bit. Not by much, just a little enough to make, it, to make someone who lands on your page go, like, oh, this person's all about, like, heavy metal music, and, yeah. you know, they've got... You know this kind of ethos, and which I connect with, and they might expose me to some new stuff that, you know, I've never heard of before. So, bam, I'm gonna follow this person. So that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, is like, you know, I mean, obviously, the social networks are still gonna exist in the blockchain world, but because it's blockchain and it's not controlled by a corporation, um, those social networks will talk to each other. 
right? And so that's the thing. You don't necessarily have to worry about... When, when you log into Hulu, yeah, uh, it, 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 you can log in through Facebook, and under the login it says, we will never share anything without your permission right under the login from Facebook. Like, bro, bro, like implying bro, Facebook. That, <laughs> that if you log in through Facebook, that is your number one concern <laughs> apart from having a Hulu account. Yes, totally, yes. Your number one concern is that Facebook's going to say you watch this show yeah, exactly, without... Yes. Yeah. That, that actually is a normal thing on a lot of different things. Yeah, we won't, oh, yeah. We won't post to Facebook. Yeah. We won't, because that, that is a fear like, of people. Oh, basically. good. Yeah. Oh, thank yeah, goodness. Good, oh, good, good, good. Exactly. The relief... <laughs> That what? How is that a a what? Yeah. Like how how is that like the number one concern of it's like, oh super convenient, I'll just use my Facebook account. Yeah, exactly. But and so then it's like not the thing convenient. is but Hulu controls that, right? Convenient because they for Facebook. Hulu at some point, you know, maybe Hulu's the next you know, Google as far as like they'll They'll be evil at some point and be like, doesn't matter, man. We're, we're posting that to Facebook. <laughs> like, right? Okay. <laughs> right? But, but the reason why that can happen is because... They probably get away with it. Remember the first Hulu ads? It had uh, um, oh, the guy that did 30 Rock. What's his name? Um, he was pretending to be an alien. And he was like turning people's brains to like mush. He's like... Oh, yeah. This is, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, that was like one of the first Hulu ads was I that saw. Was Hulu? Yeah. Okay. So Hulu was kind of had this like... You're like, whatever. Hulu, like, we're, we're from space. Yeah. We're here to... We're to take brain. over. Yeah. 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 So that, that, could, that could almost work in that their favor. Fit. Yeah, if totally. They, they pretend could to be evil. But the thing is, they'll be in control of that. That's the thing. They'll yeah. be able to say like, you know... It doesn't matter. We're gonna we're gonna post to Facebook, you know. Um, but if it's, if it's a if it's a blockchain based or whatever, and it's it's a much, much smaller entities we're talking about, um, and you're gonna control your information or whatever, and, and maybe you don't. Maybe you want to post to this social network, but not this social network, and you're gonna be able to control that um, directly, uh, rather than um, you know seeing a little thing that says that yeah trust us man we're not right you know and so anyway the way I mean I'm not saying like blockchain is not gonna cause its own problems and stuff I'm sure we'll we'll see as as the world adapts to it the types types of things that we're gonna have to sort of problems that we run into but um, but but at least we're not having this argument of like oh I'll just get on the other YouTube right you know yes it's not going to matter they're going to yeah. the blockchains will be able to talk to each other if people want to find information they'll be able to find it you know it's still it's going to be the best of both worlds we'll still be able to we'll have because it, it, it was cool before when people went to people's blogs and they they got they got these lot more personalized experiences and, and it was a lot more free rather than now everyone's just on Facebook and then they post directly on Facebook and that's, yeah. how, that's basically how you do everything now um, and so it's nice to have these most personal. But the thing is, before, it was really hard to find this stuff, right? I mean, you had to, you, you know, you, you're not going to find a lot of this stuff. I mean, take you, all of a sudden you stumble across something and like, oh man, I wish I would have found it a couple of years ago, you know, right? <laughs> you know, I, and, and it, maybe it was something that you were really into it. So you've really been scouring for all this stuff or whatever, but it didn't yeah. show up or whatever. So, but the thing is with blockchains, you're still going to have that too. You'll still have, you'll still be easy to find things, but it'll also be more personal. It won't be hmm. controlled by these sort of central entities interesting yeah that's fascinating because even even just getting web, website hosting it's not possible but it's you know there's a reason why squarespace is crushing it because yeah. like they, they made it easy they made it easy exactly. yeah and yeah i'm working on a squarespace site right now yeah <laughs> yeah which is hilarious because you had a big uh you you know because you, you don't do anything just like oh i'll just i'll just I'll just buy this snowboard. You know, it's like you got to research everything about yes, it. Yes, I do. You got to yeah, know I, I everything. I spent too much time doing that too. Yeah, I'm yeah. trying to get better at that actually. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so when when you went to get a website, yeah. which uh, which is for your film, right? Or no, 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 it's gonna be a personal website. Oh, yeah, okay. it's just gonna be uh, for a photography, yeah, video yeah, yeah. business type thing. Excellent. Yeah, just a Excellent. side project I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, yeah, I did research on it or whatever. And, yeah, and and uh, the big debate was between. WordPress, WordPress or, and Squarespace. That's yeah. right. Yeah, um, and actually, that was super because I used to have a WordPress website or whatever, and um, it ended up being a hassle. This was years ago, and um, and I was actually really surprised. Like, like WordPress has come a long way. As a matter of fact, yeah. in a, in a that lot, was fascinating because I had trouble with WordPress. I yeah, in a, a lot of ways, like if you if you 
if you and it costs you a little bit of money or whatever if you buy some of the although there's some free ones out there that are pretty way better than what they used to be you huh. spend a little bit of money though and get a paid WordPress theme the the things that you can do in that in that theme and in the, in the way you create your website is honestly easier than Squarespace like huh. it's it's more powerful and easier. Like, it's, it's literally easier to sort of change. You would think, you know, something like Squarespace would be easier, but it's not. Yeah. It's, um, it's, but the only reason why I decided Squarespace is the best is because Squarespace, um, everything works in mobile, man. And that's mm. where it's at. Like, that's the thing. It's true. It's Squarespace, for, uh, WordPress, for, for all of the amazing things that it does for desktop sites... Um, it's behind on mobile. Like it doesn't. And I contacted several uh, developers tr- asking them, you know, if I want to do this for mobile, what do I do? And they told me, yeah, we don't do that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, and they didn't seem like they were going to implement it soon. So, um, so yeah, so it's, I, I'd actually rather create a uh, website in WordPress, which I didn't think. I, would, would happen at all? I, you know, I, yeah. I thought it would be that's the archaic way of doing it, but no, actually, it's the modern best way of doing it. <laughs> um, but uh, without mobile, there's there's kind of no point. Yeah, yeah. Because you can't drag that experience. Yeah, and, and I'm not saying I'm not saying you can't make some cool stuff with mobile. You can't. I, yeah. The particular things that I'm looking for on mobile are just like cool, advanced things that I'm just like, well, I, if I'm going to impress someone, they're probably going to see it on mobile, so it better work on mobile, so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's it's fancy mobile stuff, but um, mm-hmm. Squarespace does it, so. Yeah. Yeah. I just noticed uh, YouTube became responsive with the videos you upload, because, like, before it was, like, it was, like, a stock video, mm-hmm. like, size, so right. if you uploaded, like, your vertical iPhone footage, it would right. be... Um, it have those big black yeah, yeah, boxes totally. on the side. Isn't that anymore? No, it, it, it's responsive. Oh, so dude, that's it, awesome. the whole video player changes to the size dude. of the file. So, yeah, that's great. Yeah, which I thought was really cool. That is cool. Um, yeah. And at first, like things got really big, and I was like, yeah, oh, you're like what's really going big. on? Like, yeah. And then it snapped into its old version for you know for one of the videos. Well, that's cool. I and I was like, it's so small. Out, like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know because I know sometimes when is it only does, doing it for it's not it's not changing the old stuff that's uploaded probably because it doesn't have that information. No, I imagine it's no. I think I think it changes really. for for old things as well. Okay, but but the thing with the old things is that sometimes like if if they was edited and then exported and they didn't and they exported it in that file size, it's not going to be able to adapt because it's got those. You yeah, know, it reads the file. It reads as the file that yeah, size. Totally, yeah, you the need to upload it inside. in the in the original format or whatever. Yeah. That's like yeah. Yeah. So if that's if cool. you upload a square video, it's going to be a square video on YouTube, hmm. which is kind of cool. That's kind of cool. I have to yeah. check that out. That probably yeah. I'll just, I want to see what that looks like. That's yeah. cool. Um, yeah. And what do you? How do you feel about uh, vertical? Vertical video footage. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm not. I'm not a fan. <laughs> but I mean, as a filmmaker, yeah. obviously that's the thing. And the thing is, it's not like it doesn't have its place. Like I have seen some stuff that um, really that looks. You know, it works with the format or whatever. Huh. Um, I mean, the thing is, is so like uh, you know, TV. So so basically, I don't know if you know this, but like you know, like everything used to be, you know. 3 2 or whatever, right? Everything like so all movies themselves used to be almost square, right? Huh. You know, they, they were they were usually a little wider or whatever, but although they I think they were originally square and then okay. they, and then they switched to like the standard like 3 2 uh, format which is like the standard like old school. Is that so they could um, get more film in the can? Yeah, just you the know? way it works because and stuff. It, I mean, it's and, it's square. and because it's all based off of photography stuff when they when they invented it and stuff, you know. Okay. Were, it's you know, and, and the thing is, but it, was, it stayed that way for for a long time, and and the only thing that changed is what happened is TV came out, and then the the back in the, back in those days, TV was competing directly with movies, hmm. right? I mean, if you if more people were watching TV, then they're not going to the movies, and it's not I'm not saying this it's still that way, but yeah. the way they fought back in the movies, they they were like, well, well, we're gonna add this, and one of the things they added was okay, well, it's it's wider. Right, <laughs> that's what that's what made. And the thing is, is they're they're trying to compete. And this is before they they realized, oh, like we could we could have people watch our movies on the TV. But that wasn't 
what was happening. So uh. they're competing directly. And so they just want to make it like, and so what they did is they start widening out the frame or whatever and making it, and the, and the theaters themselves became these sort of huge things or whatever. And it was really weird. Like the cinematographers, when they were, they were talking about it, when it was getting switched over, they, a lot of them were, you know, they complain, first of all, well, oh, I got to figure out, I got to, oh, now I got to figure out how to frame everything now. It's all yeah. different or whatever, but it didn't actually take long for them to completely switch their mind about it. Hmm. And what they, what they liked about it was because, it, so a more square frame, um, you're only, it, it's good for capturing like a single person or maybe two people. Sure. Right. But any sort of like, larger interaction so they, they realized that they could they could capture two people talking a lot more dynamically by having a wider frame and not it was just two people talking dynamically and still having the background have some space or whatever and so it it opened up um it, it's it's better framing for um for people interacting right versus versus one person um and it's better framing for including like um the background for for your environment right and so and that and that that worked with um with what film was trying to do as far hmm. as um the, the, i mean they could go on locations and have sort of these yeah. all awesome awesome locations and stuff and so they wanted to feature that and so it's fantastic i mean when they when they first started doing this format it's like they, they had you know it's like ben hur and like these sort yeah. of big giant yeah. epics and it's much better to have this wide frame so you can see this army with this mountain in the background, and right? But if you have a square thing, it just doesn't look, you know, you don't, you don't get the scale. I remember Doug caught on one of the classic movie channels when we were growing up, uh, like, the, the rise and fall of the Roman Empire. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> and it was all these crazy old movies. And the, the notable scene for him was like this, like crazy, crazy javelin throwing scene where like they had like yeah. just this line of legionnaires. And they're all coming out of the shield wall, and they're just like hucking javelins. And they'd like walk back in. The next row would walk out, throw a javelin, and it was just this like, and it was like a whole line. It was really impressive. Um, yeah, but there's like a legit like thirty minute intermission in the middle of this film. <laughs> it's like six Dude, hours long, totally. and you're like, I'm oh my her. goodness, it's crazy. Um, yeah, <laughs> you you said something talking about old movies. Uh, you said something the other day about if black and white movies never got sound, like if they if they stayed silent, our visual storytelling would be in a whole different like yeah space. yeah that's like a big thing like um, within among filmmakers or whatever. Yeah, basically, what happened was um, as soon as they got sound, the thing is they, they had when they had no sound they had. They had to tell things visually, and they were t they were coming up with all these different ways to, you know, convey emotion and um, and thought and stuff. And they had to do it visually, and they, they were literally forced to do it because there was you didn't have the option of like there there was no talking. You couldn't do anything. But what happened was, and you can literally see it. Like you can see, like say, um, early Hitchcock um, silent movies. Mm. And then, and then when the they, they called them the talkies, <laughs> when, <laughs> when, when sound came on, they literally they just they lost all of that, like all of the all of their knowledge, and uh, they just went straight to oh yeah, you know what they're talking? Let's just sit the camera here, yeah. and they're just we're shot, not moving, shot over shot. Yeah, that's there it. You You're go. done. That's all you need, right? <laughs> but they they couldn't do that before because they couldn't they had no voice, right? And so huh. um, yeah, so. Like, if you see a lot of the silent, towards the end of the silent era, you see, like, lots of, like, really advanced sort of visual storytelling going on. Mm -hmm. And then, over, the, like, the next 10, 20 years from the early, early sound pictures, it's gone. Like, it's just, it's just gone. Like, it's not there anymore. So, wow. yeah. Who, who do you think is approaching that these days? Is there anyone that's, like, bringing that back? I feel like Christopher Nolan might be doing that a bit. Yeah, Christopher Nolan is definitely... Um, yeah, he's he's probably one of the best guys today on on sort of visual um, visual storytelling yeah. for sure. He's like he's like an, I mean he even feels like an old school filmmaker. Like when you, <laughs> and the thing is, dude, he shoots film too. He shoots like shoots like giant film, like IMAX stuff or whatever. Yeah, but it's, yeah. Um, yeah, all his stuff feels that, and he's very. I mean, from his very earliest films, he's. Um, he's a he's a very controlled filmmaker. He, like he's he's constantly like he he knows how to 
manipulate an audience or whatever, right? Which is like, like you'll see a lot of like a lot of the sort of the top filmmakers. Um, they started out a lot of them started out in like horror or something like that, like like uh, Peter Jackson or whatever. But yeah. the thing the thing with horror is like you're you're literally you you know the type of fear and terror that you're trying to elicit from the audience. And so they're they're really thinking about. They're really thinking about their uh, the filmmaking's effect on the audience, and so you'll see a lot of um, sort of top filmmakers that kind of started in that area. In Christopher Nolan's case, it wasn't horror; it was uh, very um, manipulative and original type storytelling, usually nonlinear. Yeah. Right. I mean, it was like um, Memento wasn't his first movie; it was it was his first movie of any like size. Yeah. And it was there's literally a, there's a movie a lot like Memento. It's all black and white. That yeah, and I'm, I totally yeah. blanked out on no, the I'm, name of it. Yeah, I've seen um, it. But it that, and like it's a, like a character hangs out with this thief. Yep, totally. And, and it's, it's like this total mind and, and trip. It's a, and it's a total mind trip. It's a nonlinear storytelling or whatever. And it's tr- and he was trying to figure out how to tell a story. In a in a nonlinear way, in Memento, it's literally backwards, right? Yeah. The, the entire story is told backwards, but it works backwards. Like it's the way it's told. But the thing is, to construct a story that way, you have to you have to constantly be thinking about like the narrative's effect on the audience. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Like, yeah. You, you you literally you, like like what, why would you take this scene and make it first? Yeah, exactly. You know, and how is this, it has and, some and, sort and of how like, is this affecting the audience? They're constantly having to think of that. He, yeah. He's constantly having to think of that, um, and so that 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 helps him for all his filmmaking later on because he that like he's he's thinking about um, an audience. Not not all filmmakers do that. A lot of filmmakers. Um, Whatever they want to do, man. They're artists. Like, <laughs> I'm an artist. I don't care what people think, right? And a lot of that ends up with like sort of lazy storytelling. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what's what's the best way to combat that laziness? Well, before that question, is there anyone else other than Christopher Nolan that you got your eye on that that's got that that impresses um, you with that visual? Yeah, uh, I just totally blanked out on his name. But um, the Baby Driver guy, the uh, did you see Baby Driver? No. Um, it's uh, oh my gosh, I need my phone. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, have you seen Shaun of the Dead? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have you seen? Um, oh, it's that guy. Like yeah. like World's Ends. Yep, World's Ends. Hot Fuzz. Hot Fuzz. Nice. Yes. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. He's great. Like, um, and the, what he does. Is so his visual storytelling isn't so much because um, you see you see a lot of film filmmakers. Um, you know that makes a lot of sense actually. Yeah, a, a lot of filmmakers, the sort of visual ones you think a lot of them have like really long shots and it's all sort of told in one shot type thing. Like he does the opposite. His his it's all these like his, super quick. Yeah, his genius in storytelling is in the edits. Like his edits are amazing. They're incredible. Like he he tells incredible stories through editing. And, yeah. it's, and he and it's it's incredible yeah it's, like in Shaun of the Dead the, like his like w- like morning routine it's like the faucet's on yes. the toothbrush is <laughs> under the water it's like in his mouth <laughs> yeah exactly super and then, like, or whatever it's like him in front of the mirror and like yeah, yeah. and the last cut isn't even a cut it's just the sound of the mirror closing and then you see his roommate behind him and like <laughs> and, like the jump in of the face you're like huh but like, and because it's a zombie movie, you think it's gonna be a exactly. zombie, and I'll like, the whole and, and they that. foreshadow that scene because like they repeat it a couple times, and then he closes the mirror, and then he's finally a zombie <laughs> behind him. And you're like, oh man, <laughs> it's hilarious. Yeah, that, the whole opening of that, like they're constantly. I think the dude, it's like a good twenty minutes in or something before the zombies start. Oh yeah, but the first twenty minutes are all scares. Like it's all like because <laughs> you know it's coming, right? It's all like and it's all these manipulative scares. It's super fun. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Um, yeah, and, that, you know, uh, Peter McKinnon was even talking about that guy. On, like yeah. when he like unloads his bag, like he he tries to like edit that like that, like he tries. Oh, to, because like, he, he zips and, he and like like clicks the lens on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I saw a video about that, and I was like, that's that's really fascinating. That like <laughs> like translating something that you've seen in cinema and bringing it into your, like like putting your own kind of spin on it. Totally, yeah. It, and I can and, see like, some of his stuff in in the way Peter McKinnon does some of his stuff, some of his transitions, basically. Yeah, yeah. No, that's um, fascinating, and that's also fascinating because we were just making fun of too many cuts. We were, yeah, yes, yeah, totally. Yeah, right but before we started, is, those... we were watching these videos of a guy <laughs> jumped over a fence in some action movie. Yep, 
And Ew, I think it was Taken it, 3. <laughs> yeah. Which, uh, t- taken 3. Taken 3. You know it's going to be a quality <laughs> film. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a 3. If it has a 3 on it. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, and the guy jumps over this fence, and it's like 15 cuts, you know? Yep. It's like him running up to the fence, him jumping off his foot, him hitting the fence, yeah. him getting his arm over the fence. And the crazy thing is it's only six seconds, right? Yeah. So it's, like, so it's, just, it's just an onslaught. Yeah. yeah it's, it's it makes like, it look like you don't know how to climb yeah, over a fence. It's two to three cuts a second, and it's um, insane. But the, or, thing, the thing that's different with that is yeah, like yeah. his... What? His stuff, like that, that is literally just a person jumping over a fence, which you could show in one shot. Um, the way, um, man, I kept hoping that my, I'd remember the name if I said that. But <laughs> 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 that it didn't work. Okay, uh, but, but the way he does his cuts is like they're telling a story. Like they're, yeah. you know, it's, it's not just, he's not it, doing it to get a bunch of different angles, right? It's not because second per second. Exactly. And, and, and um, we were, it, it, like, it wasn't even just, uh, so that, that was Taken 3 we watched, but we also watched a fight scene from um, from Iron Fist. Yeah. And, it, and both of them had the same thing. The way they did their cuts, all they did was they had different angles of the same thing. <laughs> okay, yeah. right? It was different. All it was was different angles of the same thing, and they cut those together as fast as they possibly could. Which is you're not getting any new information, really. Not the way they're doing it, or as fast as they're doing it. Uh, but the way, um, but the way this other guy does it is, it's usually, it's not just different angles. It's it's completely different things that he's cutting together, and they're by putting them together in a certain way, it's telling a story. It's huh. it's creating an yeah. emotion, right? Yeah, I, re- I remember when I was drawing comics and, and studying a lot of visual storytelling. There was there was like second per second storytelling where like. Each panel was literally like almost keyframes of an animation. Okay, yeah. And like you're slowly progressing, and like people are talking back and forth. It's like second per second. But then there's this other storytelling where you're like putting these images next to each other that don't really have a whole lot to, to do with each other. And it's like weaving, and like your brain's putting this whole story together. And that was always more fascinating. Um, Doing it that way. Yeah. Right. Um, or, you know, they had their place and you had to mix it up between the two. You know, yeah. you, you can just have, you know, Oh yeah, exactly. Like, like you know, video game style. The camera's just like following behind the character, and they're just going through the level. You know, it's like I feel like that's the only that's the only medium that can get away with that. Yeah, yeah actually, I games. watched. Oh man, I started watching um, this movie. Uh, it's called Hardcore Henry. Huh. Um, and the reason. Oh I'm, yeah, I've seen that. Have you seen that? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's nuts. It's like all. It's, it's all, from, all this, from first person. Yeah. Like it's literally like a video game, basically. Yeah. Um, I didn't get very far into it. Like I, I had to stop. And the thing is, I was, I saw years ago when they when they filmed this thing, I saw the camera rig that they were using. That's one of the reasons why I wanted. I kind of wanted to yeah. see how it how it turned out or whatever. What they um, use? It, a lot of it was GoPro stuff. Huh. They did. They had some GoPro stuff, and they had some. But it, it was a it was a rig though. Like they had this crazy rig that was like mounted. I can't remember what it was like. It was like they had two of them. Like one of them was like mounted to this guy's like shoulder. It was yeah, like, it was like a gimbal thing. Um, but it was a gimbal that was fairly compact, and he, they had it mounted to the body. Um, and it, but it was unlike any other gimbal. Like it was like in this weird spear huh. thing or whatever, and that's that's how they did it. Um, and it, it was it, it was anyways it was cool, um, but I, I started watching this um, and I wasn't interested in it as far as the story goes. Yeah, um, it, it just it just wasn't working for me, and so that that right off the bat sort of turned me off on it. But then also, um, I mean, you know this because I I get weird motion sickness. Oh, right, yeah. Um, through uh, and the thing the, the thing that gives me motion sickness, I don't get motion sickness like yeah. I wouldn't when recommend I, hardcore hardcore <laughs> <Henry>. <laughs> I don't. I don't get motion sickness if I'm like on a boat or snowboarding or like driving fast cars or doing anything where I'm actually moving. Uh, although I, I will get motion sickness if I'm like spinning a lot, like if I'm like okay. um, on the silks or something, like mm-hmm. or you know I'm, I'm spending too much. Hypothetically, time. you're dangling yeah. from the ceiling off some fabric. And yes, right, around. exactly. Yeah, I, like, that will, that's like the only physical thing. But the <laughs> thing that I actually get motion sickness on, like, are, is like first person shooters like video games huh. that, that have fast movement specifically that, that, that move really fast say left to right up and down um, if I play a game like that for more than a few minutes I will get sick to my stomach huh. um, 
So it means I don't play a lot of first-person shooters, <laughs> which sense. are most video games nowadays. But the thing yeah. is, Hardcore Henry literally looks like a first-person shooter, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, it was making me motion sickness. But yeah. it was motion sick. I was just. Uh, Do you think indie films have to commit to a gimmick like that to get noticed? Because like I with searching, they did that. They committed to like, oh, we're just gonna be inside the computer. They did, yeah. yes. And then with Hardcore Henry, it's like the whole movie, whole movie shot from this guy's perspective. They don't have to. They don't have to do that, but it is... I mean, it is one way to get noticed. Uh, so Because yeah. I feel like if they did half the movie like that, I don't think people would be as excited. Yeah, or if, probably or, not. Or if they did one scene, where it's like, oh, this scene... Yeah, yeah, totally. One scene yeah. that's really good. But I, I mean, I, I think in, in Hardcore Henry's case, uh, I, you know, I didn't watch the whole thing, obviously, but... Um, it was unlikely to be a good story. <laughs> <laughs> there is one crazy method actor in there. Is there? Okay. Yeah. He's like this, um, you know, crazy drug addict in it. He's like doing crazy amounts of cocaine. But the, the method actor uh, that played him would like, before he'd go out and do, apparently he's like a public speaker, before he'd go out and like public speak, mm-hmm. he would pretend like he had like a bag of flour with him. Like that, like if it was like cocaine, oh, okay. and he I would guess. like cut it That's... and pretend to really? do it, and like try. So to... he's like literally like oh, committed, yeah. like yeah, okay. no. It's so it's like just knowing you, you probably be more fascinated by that I mean, guy. I'd be fascinated by that guy totally. Explaining yeah. his method, yeah, totally. more than watching the movie. But yeah, yeah. Um, you look up that Easter egg. About, I'll, I'll about, definitely look that up. Yeah, if I, if I don't get to watch the movie, I'll at least see what this guy's about. That's pretty <laughs> fascinating. Um, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so in Hardcore Henry's case, I'm pretty sure if I remember right, Hardcore Henry did not do well um, in the box office. Um, so I'm assuming that people probably went to go see it because of the gimmick and then um, weren't big fans of it. Yeah. Because um, like, what was that other movie that had that kind of first person shot? It was uh, um, it's about the monster hit New York. It was. Oh, ever, you're talking about. Like, but that was. That, those are more like found footage ones, though. Yeah, that's a different yeah. type. Um, different type thing because they're they're shooting other people, and so it's kind of. A, yeah. There's lots of. Found you're more footage. the camera. Exactly. Like yeah. Um, it's like you found some sort of artifact in this camera. Exactly. Yeah. So you found the camera. It's what it is. It's like it's just like excuses to have a found footage thing or whatever. And there's and there's some good ones of that like. Um, What's the name of that superhero one? That's like my favorite sort of um, found footage. Uh, oh man, what is the name of that? Yeah, I need my phone, dude. That's another another one that I, I dropped or whatever. Next time I'll remember to remind you to yeah. have your phone. I do have my phone. Actually, I see it over there. Oh, just go grab it. Yeah. Yeah. Is a superhero with found footage? <clears throat> yeah. How much of the movie's found footage in it? I, feel like I mean, it's not. It's the idea is so like the very start of the movie. Um, this you know, it's a troubled kid or whatever, and he's getting into filming stuff, right? He's. It's like he's, Super Eight. Or? Uh, no, no, it's not Super Eight. Um, a little. Uh, but anyway, he's he's so he's getting into that stuff, and then. Um, at some point, he ends up gaining these superpowers, um, and then he ends up going kind of crazy eventually, or whatever. But um, in the process of that, he uh, he gets like he gets telekinetic abilities, mm. and so he can start levitating the camera, oh, and like doing all kinds of stuff. And so you end up with like this found footage thing that has all these crazy looking shots because well, he's a filmmaker and he can like. And he and can levitate like stuff or whatever, and he can have it film himself while he's doing crazy things or whatever. And like, that's um, cool. That was a nice. That's a nice little hack. Yeah, that. yeah, that's that'd be nice, yeah, right? Fun, that, fun I wish, that problem. I wish I had that kind of superpower. <laughs> um, Our last podcast was spent way too long talking about superpowers, and we talked about that a lot, like telekinesis, um, as, as being the superpower of choice. Uh, yeah, we all went with psychic abilities for some reason. Um, yeah. Chronicle. Chronicle. Yes. Huh. Yeah. Check out Chronicle. It's a fantastic superhero movie. For Interesting. Sure. Yeah. Um, it's more like because it's a found footage thing, and like you get to see how the people gain their powers or whatever, and like and how they deal with them. 
or whatever, basically. Um, and it, it all ends up going bad. <laughs> but it's it's a great, like, huh. it's super good. Like, it's it's a great movie. And, it, and it's a found footage thing. It's one of the, the better found footage ones I've seen. Yeah. Um, oh, going back, there's something I wanted to say about, like, do the multiple cuts thing. Yeah. I've been watching a lot, a lot of skateboard videos. Okay. And whenever you see someone do a trick in a skateboard video, and then they have another shot of the trick, and the camera's in a different spot... But you didn't see the camera in the last clip, right? That means the person did the trick twice, That's right. which is more impressive. It's more know, impressive because totally. you know they did this crazy thing. Yep, they somehow got it to work twice. Yep, totally. And that's, and that's like one of those examples of like multiple cuts can sometimes add some juice. Oh, totally. Where you're like, oh my goodness, you got to be paying attention for that. Yeah, for sure. But um, yeah, absolutely. Like, like yeah. And, and it's not. And the thing is, multiple angles is like a thing. I mean, it, it is useful. Yeah. Like it, it's useful. You can you can manipulate time and space with it, huh. right? You, you manipulate time because you can you can you know, <laughs> like the the worst example or whatever is the second Indiana Jones movie or whatever that um, like he's he's on like this conveyor belt and like Indiana Jones is gonna die because he's oh, yeah. caught up oh, by yeah. like this thing. The stones the, rolling, yeah, crushing this, the people. Yeah, well, yeah, I think it's like something that's gonna cut him or like he's. I'm not entirely sure. I can't remember. It's been a while since I've seen um, the Temple of Doom, but. Uh, He's on a conveyor belt, and it's they're they're like fighting. And at the end of the conveyor belt, there's some sort of something that's going to chop him up, basically. Yeah. And the thing is, what Spielberg does is it, it looks like oh man, they're getting so close, they're getting so close. And then like, but then they do they they they're they're still traveling that way for another five minutes. You know, like, it's like he's manipulating time by changing the angles. Yeah. Right. Um, but you can manipulate, manipulate space that way too. You can make things appear bigger than what they are or smaller. I I always watched. Uh, or like we started renting all the James Bond movies back when you rented movies um, when I was a kid and there was a lot of like we have to d- diffuse this bomb oh, 30 seconds yeah. and it'd just be a game you watch the clock 30 seconds 2 <laughs> minutes have gone exactly. by yeah, and they're totally. still trying to diffuse <laughs> yeah, this 30 second bomb James Bond movies all the yeah. time totally and absolutely. it's just like yeah. James Bond yes <laughs> but without without having multiple angles, right? You couldn't do that. Yeah, you can't. You can't. You can't uh, expand or compress time that hmm. way. So um, another example going the opposite way um, is Mel Gibson's Braveheart movie. Okay. So in Braveheart, uh, it was one of Mel Gibson's sort of like first movies that he directed. It might have been his might have been his actual first movie that he directed. Huh. Um, yeah. He he did something unusual that no one had ever done before. It actually changed how action scenes were done. And what he did was, is he was in the editing room, and he was seeing, like, these, you know, these guys, like, fight or whatever, and this guy swing a sword down on a guy. And Mel Gibson's like, man, I just, you know, I wish it was faster. Can you, can you take out a few frames? Oh. Yeah, can you take out one frame in the middle of that? And, and so literally, like, Braveheart... So, like, you don't really notice... You don't really notice, but it just looks like he really swung down hard because oh, it's missing a middle frame. Huh. Like, literally, he, he... And so he's the first one to sort of, like, go into action editing that close and manipulate time wow. and sort of creating that sort of force. And it's it's changed a lot. You'll see that a lot in a lot of action movies now. Well, they'll, they'll literally go in and just remove a frame. And that, that frame gets it to move faster and create more impact. Huh. That's that's fascinating. Yeah, because I know you've talked about Saving Private Ryan before, and yeah. that had a similar thing with like the frame rate. Yeah, so they... Saving Private Ryan was um, because m- most movies are shot uh, in they call it a hundred and eighty degree shutter, but it's a, it's an old school term. What it means is the um, the shutter is only open for half of the length of the whatever the frame rate is. So, like, say um, if you're shooting twenty four individual frames a second. Then the shutter, which is exposing the film, is only open for half of that time. So it's open for one forty eighth of a second, huh. right? So um, and so what happens is when when something fast moves in front of the camera, when uh, that frame is open, when uh, when the shutter is open, uh, you get it, you're going to get some blur. You just are, right? I mean, one forty eighth is fast, but something that's zooming by at sixty miles an hour. Is going to have some blur. It's just yeah. going to, and the thing is, normal human vision has blur, right? When you shake your head around and you, or you see something really fast in front of you, you're not, you're you're not able to see like the details or whatever. It, it blurs, and so um, 
that particular um, one forty eighth of a second is considered like it, it's supposed to. It's considered natural. It's like a, the way the, the the eye naturally sees mm-hmm. movement or whatever. Yeah. Um, and so with Saving Private Ryan. Uh, Spielberg shot it at a much higher shutter speed. So the shutter was only, rather than being open for like, you know, less than a 50th of a second, uh, or a fi- or 148th of a second, it was maybe open for a um, 250th or 300th of a second. Whoa. And it was, and so because the shutter is only exposing the frame for that short amount of time, um, a much shorter amount of time, uh, it doesn't blur as much. It, it has almost no blur. So, like, Saving Private Ryan looks... It looks different than, like, normal film because of... It, you don't see any blur. It's It's got this, like, kind of immediacy-type effect or whatever. Um, now, the thing is, you actually see that time, all the time now. Like, it, like once that became a thing... Yeah. Like, everyone shoots war movies that way, and most everyone shoots action movies that way now. So... It's just... It's normal to, yeah. like... Yeah. And so normally, like, say, in a, in a previous film where uh, there was some sort of, like, grenade was thrown and it, and it blew up the dirt and the dirt came flying out at the camera or whatever, there was quite a bit of blur in the frame. There, yeah. there You know, but in Saving Private Ryan, there's not. It's just, there, it's just you just see the chunks of dirt. Yeah. There's no blur. And um, yeah. an interesting thing is the opposite of that is actually George Lucas. Um, the big innovation in the original Star Wars was actually adding the blur in, huh. um, because because before before the original Star Wars, whenever you were like taking shots of models and like you were basically doing like stop motion animation, yeah, right. Um, and so you you take a frame and then you'd move. So in like uh, I'm trying to think of like there's like Hercules and there was like kind of these Jason and the Argonauts. There was like these kind of old school movies <laughs> that had like these like you know skeleton warriors and, I and love like those. and and the thing is so they used basically stop motion to do it right so yeah. you, you you move the character and you take a frame and you move it again or whatever but the reason why it didn't look real is because there was no motion blur huh. there was and there was no motion blur and so what star wars did the reason why the the ships flying by in the original star wars look more realistic than anything that had been done previously is because he used computer controlled um cameras that would so he'd have a model and he'd have a, he'd have a, a a camera that's taking a shot right, uh-huh. but because that shot is moving while it's taking the shot, it has motion blur, huh? And so that's why he was able to mimic natural motion blur by having uh, these computer controlled cameras that would that would literally like fly, like say in the, in the original Star Wars it has the, the trench or whatever that they fly down Star Wars like Luke flies down into the trench yeah right. And in, in previous stuff, if you had stuff, you, you had these these sort of like cameras fly down to the, into the, into a model of a trench. They would move it forward, and then they'd stop and they'd take a shot. They move it forward and stop and take a shot, and it would be there'd be no motion blur. Yeah. But in this one, they had a, a continuously moving computer camera that would move forward, and as it's moving forward, it's it, the shutter is open. And it's oh. creating motion blur. Oh, so they're not moving the model, they're moving the camera. That's right, exactly. And they, yep. and they green screen it into the model. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and so, so that's why when you see this behind the scenes footage and they're sliding this camera, they're sliding like the TIE camera. fighter exploding in exactly. front of the green screen, that's what they're doing. That's so. doing, and that's giving, that's giving the oh. motion blur. And that was the reason that's like, when, when audiences first saw that, they were like, well, why does it look so real? And the reason why is because everything previous to that, if any, any sort of effects done in that way, didn't didn't have motion blur. It didn't, huh. and, and and Star Wars looked so much more realistic because of that. So, I, I've heard you talk about like your goal when you film something, you're trying to make it look like not as real. You're trying to make it look like cinematic in some way. Yes, or, totally. So yes. it's like this idea yeah. of making this war movie and making it making it so you see things you wouldn't normally see and it kind of draws you in exactly and so that, then, that, that exactly and then it's the opposite if you're trying to make something fake look real exactly you gotta draw this you gotta bring that reality into right. it somehow and that's that's like and a that good reality example. Yeah. is that they're doing is all with the camera work that's fascinating yeah totally yeah it can go both ways or whatever and it's useful both ways like in in star wars case it's a it's a fantasy like realm or whatever you know and it's like you're 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 trying to take something that's unbelievable and make it look believable in 
you know, what Spielberg did in Saving Private Ryan's case was take something that, you know, was was a real thing, you know, and, and people had seen war movies and stuff all the time, and then add a sort of different dimension to it, make it make it take it out of reality a little bit. And the thing is, it, it, it's actually that's actually a realistic looking movie or whatever. But um, he wanted what he wanted to do is he was trying to figure out a, a visual way to um, to show like. The, the sort of adrenaline and immediacy of war and the sort of like like hypersensitivity if you were in the middle of that of yeah. all of these things and that's the way he was able to do it visually which is funny because like they, they've done tests with like uh, people who will run like an obstacle course and then they'll have them sit in an ice, ice bath and then do it again and their time improves oh, really? and, the, and you know the Navy SEAL or whoever did the test was like I felt like I did it slower yeah. the second time. And they're like, that's really weird because you did it faster. Um, <laughs> and it's because tell. because their brain was processing it faster. Totally. So they, could, so they had better reaction time Absolutely. and that was because they got like shocked from the ice bath. Totally. Or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. I hadn't heard that. That's, so, that's awesome. so the fact that he intuitively made something that looked like that visually for this war movie that's really cool yeah and it, it affected pretty much all action movies made sense that <laughs> just yeah. about so yeah so so with with good storytelling in movies I feel like there's definitely there's some of that like visual innovation that has to happen yeah you know it's like some somehow just luck of the draw you tell this really great story but also you figure out how to like take out that one frame you know, right, to yeah, make, to, totally. To give yeah. it some sort of extra juice visually right, to make it yeah. new and exciting. But that's not why it's good. It's good because it's also got these other dimensions of exactly. of storytelling and emotion and and, and all this. Yeah, and, and that's the most important thing, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, in in that case, like you, you basically get that that happens for two reasons, right? One of the reasons is it's it is good for marketing. There's no doubt. Like having something that sticks out a little bit and is a little different is good. Like and it and it helps even if it's a if it's a good movie that's not, you know, solely a marketing gimmick. Um, it's it's good for it's good to get that move that good movie noticed. It's good for that. Uh, but the other reason why it happens is because it, it happens with the filmmakers that are most passionate about their storytelling. Yeah. And that's that's the reason why they're doing it. Like Mel Gibson didn't do that as a as a, as a thing to get noticed, he did it because he was passionate about the movie and the story he was telling. Yeah, and he was trying to so, add that extra exactly oomph to that sword swing. The Wachowski brothers, when they did the original Matrix or whatever, you know, I mean, there it, it looked quite a lot different than any other movie at the time. Yeah, and and it was it was their passion that did it. You know, it wasn't that that isn't what they set out to do, um, but it it helped. Obviously, it's I mean, it looked. I remember huh. seeing the original trailers and going, "Oh my gosh, you got to see this thing because." It looks different than anything I've seen before. Do, do you think that? And then once they do that, everyone copies it. You yeah, know, there's totally. there's various Absolutely. Matrixy looking. Oh yeah, movies, definitely. Yes, they copy know. it for sure. So so doesn't that kind of like if you're, you know, if you're a young kid now, and you're just finally like you know you're starting to become a teenager, you start to become right. conscious of this stuff, and you start caring a lot, a little bit more about the nuance of storytelling. And you go and you watch The Matrix, you're going to be like, well, what's the big deal? Everyone's talking about The Matrix. Yeah, totally you know, right. everyone talks seen. about this, this classic. Right. And, and is, you know, that's, I guess, another layer of what, why it's good at research films, I guess, maybe. Yeah, totally. I mean, it can definitely be, I can, I can definitely see. Because um, they're like, what was the big deal? <laughs> you know, it's like I've seen a hundred movies like that. It's like, yeah, well, yeah. before this movie, there was no movies that. like that. Exactly, right. Totally. There was one movie like this. Right, yes. Um, no, that's that's absolutely true. Although, uh, I mean, in the Matrix case, I mean, the, actually, the original Matrix is a really great story. So I would argue that it's better than anything that tried to copy it. Like, huh. um, all right, no, another question. There's some film styles that are so iconic, like Wes Anderson. Yeah. You know, it's totally. just like people will immediately know you're copying this guy. Right. Yeah, right. If you, if you <laughs> yeah. can, you can you shoot can a Wes Anderson esque like, scene yeah. in your movie. I mean, everyone's gonna know it, and is, they're gonna know you're referencing him. Yeah, totally. They're gonna know. Yeah, maybe it's you're he has fun of him. Style. Yeah, like yeah. So it's like, so what about this like non like, you know, it's like you just push it a bit. Yeah, and people feel okay with copying that, but if you go into some other space completely off the off the charts like Wes Anderson no one else is gonna go there 
Because they're like, well, that's just a brave explorer. <laughs> I love, I love, I love his movies. Not, not gonna, not gonna go that far. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. I mean, if you're, I mean, some people like, I mean, Tarantino's like probably the best example of someone that like, I mean, the guy is like the most. <laughs> he's not, he's not that prolific of a filmmaker. He hasn't made that many films, but he's the most prolific person, like movie and media content consumer <laughs> of any filmmaker alive. And so what that means is that he's constantly referencing stuff. Like everything, oh. in, everything in his movies is a reference to something else that he's seen. That's, and so he literally wow. does that. Like, he, like everything you, that you see in the frame, he's got from something else. Like that's, that's, that's what he does. That's but he owns it. And the thing is, is and, it's not, and the thing is because everyone is unique, and he's um, he does have his own style and he has his own thing, but it's it's it every, it's it's reference for him. I mean, literally, like you, you see any sort of conversations with him uh, talking about movies and films. I mean, dude, he can not only can he tell you like what movies, super obscure movies too, like crazy obscure stuff, but he could tell you the makeup artist on that movie type thing. That's how into this stuff he is, right? <laughs> like it's crazy and. Um, yeah, and the thing is, is that a lot of times, like they say that his, uh, you, why he goes so long in between movies is because you know he's, he's he has to watch a bunch of stuff. He's, he's, he's got to restock. He's literally binging for, for <laughs> months and months, years at a time on content until he's oh, ready to go again. Yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I guess not a lot of people can get away with that. No, not a lot of people can get away with it. I mean, he's uh, part of the reason. Is how, how does how does he own it? Like, does he? Because he's literally because he's so passionate about it. Like, does right? he? It's, does he say in interviews? Does he in oh, the yeah, director's totally. commentary? Oh yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, he, t- he talks about it with whatever, whoever. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. He he loves movies and he loves TV shows. Huh. Like he loves. He loves everything about it. I mean, he never, there's never like, oh yeah, no, I came up with that by myself. It's like, no, no, this came from this. Like, this is so cool, right? Like, <laughs> I mean, but, so he loves it because he loves it and he's doing it because he loves it. Mm-hmm. It's not like, I mean, it's not like a commercial thing. It's not going like, oh yeah, man, uh, dude, that Matrix made so much money. Like let's mm. just let's just make something because He's, it. Looks I feel like, like that. the vibe I get from him, the weirder the better. Like this was a didn't even have a cult following, you know, Japanese. Yes, he likes. You know, there's swamp. lots of obscure yeah, things. Yeah, that he like likes. that had a couple good shots. That oh man, and he like totally robs the outfit and the scene and the whole thing. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, he definitely does that or whatever. Makes sense. Um, where, where do you land on? Are you, are you, if you got Wes Anderson mm-hmm. on on the right over here, where he's you, like doing his completely own thing, or whatever, yeah, totally like, own yeah. thing, and it's it's very methodical, very very repeated. Right. And then over here you've got, uh, you know, Tarantino just ripping everything he loves, yeah, yeah. putting it in something, right. making it something new. Right. Totally. Yeah. And it's just totally in love with it. Where do you land on the spectrum? Yeah. I mean, obviously, style? like those are pretty good extremes. Like that's like you know pretty much everyone else is gonna land in the middle somewhere for sure. <laughs> um, and I'm definitely in the middle. Like I, like I don't. I have no problems like referencing stuff though. Yeah. Like, that, like I think. I feel like you're more Tarantino just because you know yeah, so much. I'm definitely yeah yeah like, definitely more Tarantino as far as that that goes or whatever. Um, but I'm not. I actually don't watch as much content as Tarantino. Like, and I don't. I'm not. I, and I don't, pretty much no one is as as passionate about it. as much as I as much as I love movies and TV shows and stuff like that. Um, I mean, no one loves it as much as him, right? Um, so I love all that stuff, and but I have my own ideas on how things should be done for sure. Yeah. yeah. But everyone knows. So. Hey, what's up, Lon? Oh no, get in here, get in here. Hmm. Okay, right. so we're doing a podcast right now. Okay. I need I need a commitment from you. <laughs> New Iron Fist came out. We need to make our podcast uh, talking about the old Iron so, Fist. Uh, Joe already started watching yeah, it. All he's gonna have to start right. over again. <laughs> no, no, it's gonna happen. That is, it's gonna be a podcast. So right. definitely <laughs> have an opinion on what's, that. What's, what's a day? It might be better. We need, like, I'm, 
I think I don't remember what Joe said. He did start watching it, but yeah. So the cat, the cast is long, right? Mike, Joe, Matt, and me. Five five people podcasting. Oh, is that what you're doing right now? Yes. Yeah, we're doing a podcast. Yeah. Well, go pro. Is Battery it dead? died. Oh, phone I probably got enough. All right. How long have we been talking? Uh, pretty good time. Like hour. 20, right. hour 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah. We've been talking for an hour and a half. Yeah, they know, they're even, only about an hour 40 minutes. There's, 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 there's a million about. subjects that we didn't broach. So <laughs> we, didn't, like, we didn't even a Future podcast. Like, future exactly. Podcasts. That's fun. So, oh man, yeah. We can, yeah. Look, look forward to that Iron Fist uh, yes, episode. Let, let me know. Yeah. Next time on Night Jam 